Hallelujah. Has God been good to anybody in here? Amen. So many doors you've opened. So many ways you've made. That's what the word say. So many times you healed me. You've been better than good to me. Hallelujah. Is that anybody's testimonial today? He's been good, but listen, he's been better than good to me. How do you know? Because look, you could just look back there and say, you know what? The Lord has allowed me to see another year. Hallelujah. I could have been dead sleeping in my grave, but God told death to behave. And it is of his mercies that we are not consumed. Lord, you've been so good to us. You've been better than good to us. We thank you. So many doors you opened for us last year. So many ways you made for us last year. So many times you healed us last year. Father, and you're not done. We thank you for what you're going to do for us in this new year. Thank you for bringing us over. Hallelujah. Thank you for bringing us over. Thank you for keeping us, Father. And thank you for allowing us to come into your house on today. Here this first Sunday, this first day in a new year. We're grateful on today. We come to tell you thank you. We come to tell you thank you. We come to tell you thank you. We appreciate you for all you've done. For all that you've done for us. And Father, as we stand before, Lord, in, this, in these brief moments, as I stand before your people, ask that you would move me out of the way word my mouth allow us to hear from you today speak to us clearly through your word father speak and we will hear speak and we will obey speak to our hearts speak to our minds speak to our situation whatever we are dealing with whatever we may have brought in here every worry every concern father let no one leave here the same way that they came but God, let us leave here saying, surely we've heard from the Lord. Surely we've been in the presence of the Lord. And we'll be so careful and mindful to give you the praise, the glory, the honor that is due your name. It's in the mighty and matchless and most precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the lord you may be seated you may be seated amen i'm just grateful to be here on today grateful for what all god has done for us amen just uh amen a new year amen i don't know what this year holds i tell you um nobody told us when 2020 uh came around and we didn't know it is so funny people were saying 2020 2020 a year of new vision a year of, year of clear vision and all of that new vision and clear vision and nobody saw covid coming i'll tell you that so you know i think sometimes we like to put 2008 is going to be great 2009 is going to be fine we don't know what a year is going to hold but i do know who holds my future amen and god is in control as long as i've got god amen everything's gonna be all right amen if you have your bibles we have so many that are out today amen uh thank the lord amen for all of them the musicians those that stood in Amen. give them a hand amen but we have some that are out uh not feeling well uh, that what you all were saying about mother hubbard not feeling well in their body um some are out of the city some are sick and, and let me just say this uh, I did speak with some uh, individuals. Um, there's a lot of sickness going on around right now. Uh, and it's not just COVID, there's RSV, flu, everything. And so if you have a fever, if you have a cough, uh, just stay home, please, amen. Sometimes we like to self-diagnose it. We know oh, it's just my allergies. If you don't know what it is, you got a fever, cough, stay home and get it out of your system, amen. Um, but we thank the Lord and we're praying for those that are not feeling well on today. But you're here on today, amen, amen, and the Lord is here. If you would, please turn with me to the book of Isaiah. Amen. The book of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. And we're going to be starting in the, um, at the 14th verse. Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, starting at the 14th verse. Amen. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Uh, 
and when you have it you can stand if you're able to those that are able to you can stand Isaiah 43 starting at the 14th chapter 40 that what did I say Isaiah 43 starting at 14th verse Isaiah the 43rd chapter starting at the 14th verse New Living Translation and this is what it reads um, the Lord speaking through his prophet he said this is what the Lord says your Redeemer the Holy One of Israel for your sakes I will send an army against Babylon forcing the, uh, the, the Babylonians to flee in those ships they are so proud of verse 15 I am the Lord your Holy One Israel's creator and king I am the Lord who opened the way through the waters making a dry path through the sea I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all of its chariots and horses and I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned their lives stuffed out like a smoldering candle wick verse 18 but forget all of that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. Verse 19. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry waste land. I, I want to read one more time, just starting at verse 18. He said, the Lord said, but forget all of that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I am about to do something new. Amen. The King James Version said a new thing. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his word. You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord at this time. And in the passage, Isaiah the prophet is speaking the mind of God to his people, Israel, at a time when they needed encouragement the most because uh, of their own foolishness, uh, because of their own unfaithfulness. Amen. Because of their own sins. Anybody ever made a mistake and it caused you all kinds of trouble? Amen. It caused you all kinds of trouble. And nobody had to tell you that you messed up because of the predicament that you found yourself in. You knew full well, I caused this, I messed up, and oh, what a place I'm in. Because of their own fault, their own foolishness, their own unfaithfulness, their own sins. God allowed them to be driven out of their own land and to be taken captive by the Babylonians. And sometimes God, if he loves you, the Bible says those who he loves, he chastises. Sometimes the correction of the Lord doesn't feel good. Sometimes it doesn't feel nice. Uh, it doesn't make you feel good. But sometimes God does stuff to get your attention. But he's just so merciful that even when calamity befalls you and it's your fault, he still steps in in his grace and his mercy. Amen. And will bring you out of it. And sometimes, this is what I've learned, when you're down, you don't need a lecture because you've already lectured yourself. You don't need someone to make you feel bad because you feel bad enough as it is. You don't need to be kicked while you're down because you can't get any lower. Uh, and all you need is somebody to speak life into your situation. Do I have a witness on today? And because God is merciful and he's kind and he's long suffering, that is exactly what he did. After a, a prescribed season of captivity, God spoke through his prophet Isaiah and he starts out by reminding them of who he is and what he's done. And he said, look, I'm the one talking about what he did for their forefathers. I'm the one who, who opened the Red Sea and allowed them to walk through on, on dry land. I'm the one when they were being pursued by Pharaoh's army and they cried out for deliverance. I'm the one who opened the, oh, oh, the same 
uh, ocean that I opened allowed the water to overtake the army and drown them uh, in the Red Sea. I'm the one that brought them out with a strong and a, and a mighty hand. And he begins to just give his resume, if you will, Pastor Johnson, uh, of the things that he had already done for them. Reminding them that I am the Lord your God in case they forgot. And then he, he, he says something, he lays out all of his accomplishment, and then he says something very peculiar. He said, but I want you to forget all about that. Hallelujah. Forget all of that. And what God would say, you say, forget it. What he was saying, he said, it's, it's not that I don't want you to remember what I did for you, because there's a saying that says, those that forget history are doomed to repeat it. He said, I, I, not that I don't want you to remember. He said, but I don't want you to get stuck there. <laughs> I don't want you to get stuck there. I don't want you to stay there. I remember, and we have a habit sometimes. They say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, Pastor Johnson. But God's not like that. I, I remember when we got to our very first church building. And understand this was not just a building. This is the building, the church that I got saved in as a young man. The Lord opened the door. That church was moving on. And I remember that when we got to our first church building and we were so excited and we were so happy and we had, uh, you know, fixed the place up. And I, I was just so excited. And I remember I thought, the Lord must be trying to do something because this is the place where I got saved and got my start in my Christian walk. And now here I am. Uh, as a matter of fact, God himself led us to that building. I said, and now here I am getting ready to start a ministry in the same place that I started uh, my Christian walk. And I was so enamored with the building and, and it was just the right size for us. Uh, it was a small building, uh, but it was just the right size for us. Uh, and the price was low. They only wanted $60,000 for the building. And we didn't have any money. And I thought, I said, you know, I see what the Lord is trying to do. He saved me here. And now we're starting our new ministry here. And I tried to buy the building. And the man said, I'm not budging from $60,000, and it fell through. We couldn't buy the building. And I was a little upset because we had nowhere to go. As a matter of fact, we went from that building to a hotel because there was nowhere else for us to go. And, and I was disturbed. I couldn't understand why God wouldn't just give the building to me because it was paid off. Uh, they didn't owe any money on it. As a matter of fact, the man that owned the building told me, listen, the way we got this building is somebody helped us out. And so in my mind, I said, if somebody helped you, well, brother, come on, pay it forward. Why don't you uh, help us? And we, we didn't get the building. And I was, I was a little perturbed by that. And then the Lord began uh, to deal with me and show me something. That was just a starting place because here's the thing. As much as I love that building, I would have wanted to start there. I had to learn that you cannot birth something new in an old womb. All right, all right. Say that. Come on. Come on. You cannot birth something new in an old womb. And I, I was just thinking, I said, now, Mark, the second chapter Jesus said and I'm you know what I want you to turn there and read this with me mark the second chapter the 22nd verse I, I was just so sure that that's where God had for me to be because he'd done something for me there the greatest thing he ever did for me he saved me and I said, well, Lord, for sure. But God said, I'm trying to do a new thing. And Mark, the second chapter, the 22nd verse, this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, no one puts new wine in old wineskins. For the wine would burst the wineskins 
and the wine and the skins would be lost. New wine calls for new wine skins. They would take skin, like leather, and they would condition them and, and make them as a holding place for wine. Um, and they used them and they reused them, but the problem was that when the wine skins became old, they lost their elasticity. And so if you try to put new wine into an old wine skin, as it began to uh, grow and begin to ferment, it would burst because of the movement. It had had the capacity to hold what you were putting in it. It would burst and you would lose the wine and destroy the wine skin. So what Jesus was saying is that you cannot put something new, Pastor Johnson, in something old. Hallelujah. Glory. You can't put a new move of God in an old mentality. Do I have a witness here today? Sometimes we say, well, I'm looking for God to do something new. And God said, I need somewhere to do it. Hallelujah. When he got ready to send his son, Jesus, into the earth, he found a new womb to put it in. As a matter of fact, one that had never carried a child before because he was trying to move in the earth and I learned that even as we began uh, the church and we started and y'all have to understand where I came from many of y'all don't know I, that I came from a mainline traditional denomination and I thank God for my foundation but I didn't fully understand what God was trying to do for this church I didn't fully understand what God was trying to do with me. And so I did the best that I knew how. And when we began the church, I tried, listen to what I'm saying. I tried to replicate everything from where we came from, Pastor Johnson. I got all of the old literature. I took all of the books. Y'all remember Power for Living? I, I'm telling you, I, I, I tried to replicate the same order of service because that was all that I knew. And I remember that no matter how I tried, something was just not clicking. And I remember one Sunday, uh, we didn't have deacons, and so I would just look out in the audience and I would say, brother, this man here come up and dismiss us. And I said to one of the men, and this is when it began to click that God was trying to do a new work. I looked and I said, brother, uh, that time is Rocha. I said, brother Rocha, come up and give us our benediction. And he stood there and he looked at me so crazy. I said, brother, come give us the benediction. And he just stood there. And one of the members had to pull me to the side. And it was Sister Lisa. Y'all know her back then. She don't even remember. She said, Pastor, she said, these folks don't know what a benediction is. I said, I said he said, I don't know either. That's a dismissing prayer. That's a dismissing prayer. He said, she said, Pastor, these people don't know what a benediction is. They didn't know what a benediction was. They didn't know what the responsive reading was. They didn't know a statement of faith. I believe concerning the Bible. We believe the Bible to be inspired and only infallible written word of God. Now those of y'all from the church of God in Christ know that statement. But they didn't know, Pastor Johnson, they didn't know the statement of faith. They didn't know the old songs of the church. And that's why somebody said, why y'all be putting the words up there? That's why we put words because the Lord was sending people that didn't know, take the Lord along with you everywhere you go. They, some of them didn't even know amazing grace, how sweet the sound, because they were unchurched. And God was trying to do something new. I remember one Sunday, we had a, a speaker got up and they got through speaking and they, uh, they went into the yes Lord praise. Yes, yes. And I remember the church was got up and people were singing. And when I got to work, y'all remember Brother Fabian, he said, what was that song that everybody was singing at the end of the message? And I said, oh, I said, that's the yes, Lord, praise. I said, that's Bishop Charles Harrison Mason. The Lord gave him that in prayer. And I said, they sing it all over the world in the church of God in Christ. And he said, oh, okay. He didn't have a clue 
And the Lord was trying to show me that I'm sending people what I'm trying to do, I'm sending people that don't know anything about form or fashion or tradition. Some of them have been unchurched. The Lord has sent atheists. And it's interesting to see what God is doing. I said, because he's not done yet. Because I look out and we've got people who came from the Catholic Church. And we've got people who came from the Southern Baptist Church. And we got people that came from the Pentecostal Church. And we got people that came from no church at all. Come on here, hallelujah. And somebody visited the church and they said, I've never seen a church that diverse. And that is because it is the Lord's doing. Amen. Amen. Said, I'm trying to do something new. And I had to learn to step back and say, Lord, I don't have a clue what you're doing. Show me. Lead me. Because sometimes we can get trapped in tradition. Do I have a witness in here today? Amen. God with Israel was trying to birth a new nation in a new land. Listen to what I'm saying. And they could not let go of their old ways. He brought them out with a mighty hand, brought them through the Red Sea, destroyed the army that was pursuing them, fed them with manna and quail. That was the first door dash. Uh, he led them with a pillar a fire by, by day, a cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night, and was so good to them. And yet, the Bible said that they were on the way to a new land and kept saying, We were better off where we came from. Sound like some of us. <laughs> you ask him to take you out. You ask him to deliver you. And then he does it and you begin to look back. Isn't it funny what time does to you? How you forget you could be in a bad situation. You get out of it long enough. And you actually start to think fondly of where you came from. Huh? You actually start to reminisce in such a good way. You get out of a, a bad relationship and everybody's so happy for you. And the longer that you stay away from that person, you start looking at the phone. And then you go and find their name and your contacts. Come on here. It's your crazy stuff. And you start looking at old text messages and, you know, and emojis. And oh my God. And you start thinking fine. And you go look at an old photo album and, 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 and look at... And all the old pictures of you standing together and the time we had Christmas and your first Valentine's Day gift and your first Valentine's Day card. And just by beginning to reminisce, you begin to forget the reason why. Hallelujah. Why you had to leave them. Why, why you broke up with them. Why you divorced them. Till you get back and say, what was I thinking? Hallelujah. And God brought Israel out with a mighty hand. Hallelujah. He put a new song and they, they left singing a new song. Glory to his name. And yet they kept looking back and God, the Bible said they couldn't let go of their old ways, Pastor Johnson. They, they were actually worshiping the gods of their ancestors, the gods, that, and I mean the little G-O-D. Couldn't let go of their old gods, their old traditions. Isn't this something you think a slap in the face that God, God Almighty, the true and living God brings you out. And no sooner than he brings you out, you build a golden idol and begin to worship that. All right. <laughs> Instead of your creator. And I look, they say, people say this every year. They say new year, New me. Ain't that what they say? And there's something called the January Gym Rush. I joined the gym. I, I've been going since September. And I went Thursday. And it was empty. Not complete. About two people there. You know. And I went the next day. And it was empty. But they said watch out. Because January is here. And they say the gym memberships go through the roof, Pastor Johnson, because people say it's a new year. Hallelujah. It's a new me. 
I'm about to work off all of that fruit cake and, and sweet potato pie. Hallelujah. And ham and turkey and yams and come on now, huh? And chocolate chip cookies. And somebody over there made me some German chocolate cake cookies. Hallelujah. And brownies. I had my cut off day and I said no more. And they showed up at my house with a bag full of cookies. Listen, <laughs> I said, I guess I'm going to have to do another day. Listen, somebody else handed me a buttermilk pie. Amen. Listen, but we say January is coming. I'm putting away all the old things. What we say, forgetting what's behind me. I look forward. Amen. Pressing toward the mark. And so they said there's a January gym rush, Pastor Johnson, and they say the gym memberships go through the roof. But I saw a statistic and said that by the end of January, <laughs> less than 30 days, by the end of January, 50% of those memberships have been canceled. <laughs> Glory. Because the truth is, it is a new year, hallelujah. But that's the only thing that's new. Because we bring over old habits, old sins, old debts, old expectations into a new year. Do I have a witness in here today? And I've learned that you can be so fixated on the past that you can't appreciate the present and you won't look to the future. And God said to Israel, forget all of that. Forget where you were. Forget what you saw, the ten plagues and all that. I want you to forget all of that. And I can understand why God would want us to forget old habits and sins. But why would he want me to forget the good things that he's done? He said, and it's not, and listen to me carefully. He said, it's not that I want you to forget the good that I've done and the miracles that I performed and the ways that I made. He said, it's not that I want you to forget, but I do not want you to limit me to just that. Hallelujah. Don't you limit me. Don't put me in a box because I'm God. Hallelujah. First of all, there's no box that's big enough to hold him. He said, I don't want you to put limitations on me based on what you heard about me. I, I don't want you to put limitations on me even based on what you've seen me do because you have no idea what I'm capable of. Glory. Don't limit God. I'm talking about, listen, yes, he did some great things in 2022, but that year is gone. And this is a new year, and I'm telling you, God is getting ready to do some new things. Glory to his name. God is getting ready to do some great things and some mighty, oh, we've experienced him. But I'm, I'm declaring what I feel on the inside. Oh, we're about to see some things that we've never seen before. If we trust him, if we believe him. He said, I don't want you to forget, but I don't want you to hold me to that. Because there's something more. This is what I've learned about God. Hallelujah. This is what I've learned about God. Sometimes I saw a story, evangelist R.W. Schambach. He said, I preached a crusade under a tent. The choir sang. Worship went forth. I preached the message. And R.W. Schambach said, and I saw one of the greatest miracles that I'd ever seen in my life as an evangelist. Saw God heal somebody in a way that I'd never seen before whole tent that's when they did tent revival the whole tent went up in praise never seen God do something like that before and hard to be shambach and this is what we do sometimes he said I, I he said that was something else and so he said the next night I changed the program he said and I told the choir sing those same songs again <laughs> said keep the same order of worship and they did it and he said, and I even preach the exact same message the same way. And he said, but God didn't move that night. Hallelujah. Because he thought it was a ritual. 
And he thought it was a formula. And he thought it was the way that he preached. But it was God. And God doesn't move the same way every time. Hallelujah. He said, forget the formula. Because this is what the Lord is saying. He said, forget all of that. Forget the former. Forget the past. Forget what you thought you knew. Forget what you heard. Forget what somebody told you. Forget what you thought. Forget what you wrote down. Forget what somebody even prophesied to you. Come on here. Y'all know here, buddy. Forget all of that, God said, because I'm going to do a new thing. Hallelujah. I'm about to do something new. And I've learned God is constantly. If you pay attention, God is constantly revealing himself. And the problem is most of us have only experienced some of God. Hallelujah. Some of who he is. And some of what we can do. And some of us get a glimpse. And we make the mistake of thinking that we've seen it all. Hallelujah. We get a glimpse. And we think that we've seen it all. Moses saw facets of God can you imagine he went up on the mountain and he spent so much time with God that it scared folks when he came down because his face was glowing oh he had to wear a veil over the over his face and if you read your Bible the Bible says listen to this that Moses the only prophet that was ever called a face-to-face -face prophet he saw God face to face but even he didn't see everything because Moses walked with him and he talked with him and he knew him and he fellowship with him and one day he said God I want to see all of you hallelujah God said boy you can't handle that he said I'll tell you what I'm going to put you over in the side of a mountain and I'm going to walk by and when I move my hand I want you to look and I'll just let you see the back side of me a face to face prophet still only got just a little bit of what God was and who God is he had the God is constantly don't get stuck in a way and in a mode I, I, I'm on the inside of me there's something that's bursting and breaking again because I want more of God hallelujah pastor Johnson I appreciate his presence when I come to church but there's so much more that I want to see I love feeling him in worship oh but there's so much more that I want to see I know what he can do you know the same God that we read of that healed the sick and raised the dead that cast out demons he's still that same God and he has not stopped moving the problem is we've just stopped believing him And I don't care if you've been saved 10, 15, 20, 30 years. How many of you have been saved over 30 years? Can I see your hand? Anybody been saved 20 years or more? Man, 10 years or more. Can I tell you, you still don't know all there is to know about God. I don't care how long you've walked with him. There's still things that you haven't discovered about him. You haven't known. And God said, I'm trying to show you something else. I'm trying to show you something new. He's always revealing facets of himself. And you watch the trailer and you think you've seen the whole movie, Pastor Johnson. Hallelujah. But not so with God. And here's the thing you don't even like. If you think about yourself, you don't even like to be held, amen, and put in a box defined by one experience. And some people will say, I know Dolores Evans. I know her. I went to high school with her. She was like this. And she was so quiet. Say, oh, I know him. I used to work with him. I know him. I know her. We grew up together. Well, here's the thing. People love to say that. Pastor Johnson, listen, you might have worked with me. Uh, you might have grown up with me. You might have attended school with me. Listen, you may have met me, but I can guarantee you, you still don't know everything that there is to know about 
me and God was saying to Israel and to us you have experienced me as a defender you have experienced me as a guide you have experienced me as a way maker you have experienced me as a protector you have experienced me as a provider come on here you have experienced me in so many ways oh but you ain't seen nothing yet hallelujah Ooh. because God said to Israel listen when I return you to the land of promise then you're going to learn that not only am I able to make a promise oh but I'm big enough and I'm bad enough to keep it and fulfill it and I will perform everything that I said that I'm going to do Ephesians 3 and 20 says now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you could even ask or think hallelujah that means pastor johnson if i can think about it if i could ask it god will exceed it hallelujah if i could even think about it there's some things that i thought about that i wanted god to do for me hallelujah i got a car out there i said listen lord if you just give me something that drives with air i'm fine with it and i didn't think that i could do any better than that but god let me walk into a dealership and brought the payment i'm telling you what god can do and brought the payment down to where i could afford it matter of fact the man that sold me the car said i don't think you can afford that but he didn't know the god that i serve hallelujah <laughs> can do exceeding abundantly above all that you could even ask or think according to the power that works in us and he said so the new year God said forget all of that forget what you thought and do you not know that sometimes God meets you on your level of expectation some of us don't believe that God can do more than heal a headache oh it got quiet in here some of us don't believe that he can heal a headache so if that's all you believe he can do hey but he said forget all of that God said because I'm about to do something new hallelujah he said and now this is the thing I'm almost done God said not only do I want you to let go of the idea and hear me today I'm almost done not only do I want you to let go of the idea of what you think I can do but I want you to let go of what I didn't do. Not only do I want you to let go of what you thought of me, what you believe and what you think I can do, but this year, God said, I want you to let go of what I didn't do. What you saying? See, because some of us have a list of things that we believed God for. And because he didn't answer the way we wanted or he didn't answer at all hallelujah we are holding on to that and I know I'm talking to somebody here today because I've been there because he didn't answer the way you thought he should have or he didn't answer at all you are holding on to that as a reason or can I just be honest as an excuse to doubt and some of you in here today have even stopped praying okay now see I might have hit somebody you have held on to that because he didn't do it say let go of that because he didn't do it you have given in to that as a reason to doubt and some of you have even stopped praying all together I have can I tell you what I've experienced? I have prayed for people and believed that God would heal them and they died. Y'all don't believe that. I have applied for loans that did not get approved. I have signed contracts that fell through. The things I was believing God for. I found a couple of days ago some blueprints for a building that never got built, Pastor Johnson. Matter of fact, can I tell you about the building? On those blueprints, it was a steel building. 
with offices, with classrooms, with a cafeteria. Oh, you're going to get it in a minute. <laughs> but those blueprints are about five to six years old. And God didn't do. I moved in faith. I went and sat at Dixon Builders. Went and sat across from an architect that had built churches and he handed me the blueprints. I showed them to the church in a business meeting one year. And the building never got built. God didn't do it. Pastor Johnson, that building would have cost us $700,000. But sometimes God said, I want you to let go of what I didn't do. What, what you ask. I remember standing before our church board and telling them, we're not going to sue this person. That lied, broke contract, and cost us money. We have every right to pursue legal action, but we're going to let it go, Pastor Johnson. Hallelujah. And look what God did. Glory. Because I was trying to buy something old. Something stinky. Y'all remember that building? <laughs> Deacon Duhart over there, he walked in. He said, they just, he was talking about how that, he said, that building smelled musty. I said, yeah, I didn't realize it. He'd been in that building so long. I was trying to buy something old, something musty, something dusty, and God was trying to give us something new. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes, in order to get something new from the Lord, you got to let go of what was. You got to let go of the old. And sometimes God said, the reason I didn't give you that, Eric Murphy, is because I had this for you. Aren't you glad? Amen. So the Lord said, for this year, let go of everything that was. It, you can't do anything about it. It's past. God said, but I want to do something else. Amen. God said, I want to do something new in you. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. Amen. But I say this every year, and God has done it. But I don't want to leave this year the same way that I came into it. Amen. He said, I'm going to do something. He said, I will make a pathway in the wilderness. And I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. A road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. In other words, God said, I'm going to do what you think is impossible. Amen. I want you to do this for me. Say, Lord, I'm going to let go. Say, Lord, I'm going to let go. Uh, of what was. And I want you. To do something new. Say it again. Lord. I let go. Of what was. And I want you. Hallelujah. To do something new. One more time. Father. Come on. I let go. Of what was. And I want you. To do something new. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you believe it? God is going. I'm t glory and I'm not always see sometimes we get so I want a new house I want listen you know what's new when you've been coming to church by yourself and one Sunday your children come into church and they get saved and now they sitting on the road with you rejoicing and that's something new I know what I'm talking about 14 years my daddy sat at home and my mama took us to church and what was new was one Sunday morning when he got saved the next week he was beating on our doors and saying get up it's time to go to church we can't be late for Sunday school oh that was something new Pastor Johnson glory listen when you've been going to bed with heartache and headaches every night and all of a sudden the joy of the Lord comes in and you wake up every morning with peace oh that's something new Oh, you say, what is this? Woo! I never 
felt this way before, but I thank you for it. That's something new. Hallelujah. And I'm looking for God to do something great. Even in this church. I want God to spiritually transform this church in a greater way. I mean it. We say there's higher heights and deeper depths. Well, I want to go higher. And I want to go deeper in God. Hallelujah. I'm looking for the Lord to do a new thing. Amen. In us. In this church. In me. Amen. In my family. There's some things that I've been believing and trusting God for in my family. Some things that have been burdening me in my own family. And I'm not just talking about my immediate family. I've got some cousins and some relatives that I talk to my wife about that I love dearly. And I begin to wonder, I said, Lord, when are you going to save them? Uh, when are they coming back? It looks like they just doing whatever they want to. You know when people raise right and they just act. You say, you, and you know better. But I'm looking for God to do something. I mean it. That's my burden. I want God to do a new thing. Amen. We believe in God for something great. I'm serious. This year, I have such a burden on me. Amen. I don't want to just get stuck in form of fashion and tradition and the same old, same old. But I want God to do a new thing. Anybody believe it? Amen. Is that anybody? I want God to do a new thing. Amen. And he said in his word, and I've already begun it. Oh, yes, he has. I've already begun it. Can't you see it? Hallelujah. Can't you feel it? Can't you sense it? I'm already moving. I'm already working. Amen. God is going to do a new thing. Amen. We're getting ready to go home, but I wanted to do this. Every year, just about every year, God had laid it on my heart, and we hadn't done it since we had started the church one year, and then God just impressed upon me. And it was so funny because the Lord impressed it upon me, and then I didn't say anything to anybody, and Somebody called me and said, Pastor, we, we need to do a corporate fast as a church. And I said, well, you won't believe what the Lord just said. Amen. But I want God to do something in this church. And I mean it. Sometimes the Bible said these kind come up not by prayer and by fasting. Amen. And we have no idea what this year holds. The good, the bad, and the ugly. God does. But this is what I want to do. Sometimes... We start out and we say, well, we want this to be your breakthrough. And that's what this is. A, we're fasting for breakthrough. All I want is for the will of God to be done in us. There are some things that God has been trying to do in us. Do you know there's some things that God has been trying to say to us and we can't hear him? Sometimes the Lord is. knocking and you not answering and he been knocking all 2022 and some of y'all still got the door locked the door to your heart locked up God has been trying to do some things in us but this year this is all I want I want what God has been trying to do in me I want what God has been trying to do in this church I want what God has been trying to do in my family and maybe I was the one standing in the way of it my own stubbornness or maybe I held God to such a standard that I thought this is the way you're going to do it and God said that's not what I've been trying to do but you couldn't hear me if you would hear me and heed and obey my instructions I could have done it but I want to move me out of the way anybody here with them I want to move my flesh out of the way. I want to move my emotions out of the way. I want to move my mind because sometimes we spent last year overthinking some stuff. Do I have a witness in here today? And so this is what we're going to do. Amen. We will are getting ready to start consecration. Amen. Somebody's excited about it. Somebody said, oh Lord. For the next 30 days. Amen. The next 30 days. We are going to go into consecration as a church. Now, there's some churches that they do 21-day fast. They do a Daniel fast. I know one church it says you don't eat from time you get up to 6 o'clock p.m. Well, yes. And somebody said, hmm. 
Say, Lubis is calling me. Hey, Amen. We going to get there. Somebody say, oh, Lord. Hey, Amen. But this is what we're going to do. We are going to enter into a time of consecration for this year. Amen. We Revival is coming shortly. But you don't bring revival into, I said, new wine and old wine skin. We're not going to bring an evangelist in here and they got to break up, follow ground for two nights. Because we're looking at a three night revival. They got to break, spend two nights breaking up, follow ground with your old self and your old ways and your old habits and your old mindset. But when you come in ready to receive, when you come in, the strongholds have already been broken. When you come in ready, amen. And so we're going to, for the next 30 days, consecrate ourselves. As I said, um, Fridays are our fast days, midnight to noon. And I'm not going to ask how many of y'all observe it. Amen. I do. My children do. So I'm, one day I was getting up. Well, one of them doesn't. I think y'all can figure out who it is. But um, <laughs> she need to. But I got up and I was making oatmeal for her. And I told the other ones, have y'all had breakfast? They said, Dad, it's Friday. I said, that's right. They fast. Amen. 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 But I want you to spend this time now. Some of y'all are already thinking about, well, I got TikTok and Facebook. and what. I'm going to tell you right now, if the thing that you have the hardest time letting go of, that's the very thing. And I'm not talking about, well, I'm not going to eat candy, but you don't like candy. <laughs> I'm going to stay away from sweets. Well, you don't eat sweets. So get off Facebook. Oh, see, it got real quiet there. <laughs> TikTok for 30, you can't give 365 days and you can't let go for 30 days. Instagram, that, that was mine, brother. I'm going to be honest with you. Instagram had me, brother. Stronghold. I said, my God, three hours just scrolling. Listen, but turn off Facebook, turn off Instagram, turn off. And that time that you would normally spend scrolling and liking and sharing and all of that, Get into your word. Amen. Find your Bible. Get the dust off of it. You don't even know where it's at. I mean your real Bible, not the one you read on your phone. Find your physical, this Bible. Y'all, this is what it looks like, some of y'all. This is what it looks like, okay? You don't press a button to turn it on. This is what it looks like. Find your Bible and get into your word. Amen. And we're going to spend the next, I'm serious. Because there's some things that we need to move. I'm talking about in this church, in our family. Not another year the same. But I want God to do something in us. Something new in this church. Amen. I want him to prepare us for the harvest of souls that he's sending. Amen. And we've got to be ready. So for the next 30 days, amen, we're going to be entering a period of consecration.